Hello everyone, um, my name is Michael Stefan. I work for um, Hanover Search, um, an executive search firm uh, catering to the actuarial market. Um, I've been asked by Paul to record a video for his channel. Um, he feels that uh, his audience would be particularly interested in um, what I do, which is uh, basically um, recruiting, but at the same time I have a lot of experience in doing salary benchmarking and actually produce uh, an annual salary survey um, which um, is sent out to qualified actuaries in the UK uh, in the general insurance market, uh, which has been very popular. Um, so I'll, I'm just going to spend uh, 50 to 20 minutes in today's session just talking about salaries and skills. It's, it's a very loose um, sort of um, topic. Um, so I just want to talk everyone through um, really, I guess, two, two resources that I'm going to be using today. Um, so the first one, which I'll, of course, put a link to, um, is our annual um, salary survey for non-qualified, so for non-life qualified actuaries. Um, again, don't worry about writing the link down. I'll get Paul to post it on his channel. Um, essentially, this is uh, based on a survey that's sent out to uh, UK GI actuaries every year. Um, it has uh, seven questions. Um, and I've actually used the R programming language to actually uh, write this up in R Markdown, and then this gets published online on the R Pubs website. Um, I won't go through it now because you can go through it yourself. Uh, what I will say is it's uh, it's got a lot of detail on there. Uh, it talks about earnings, uh, talks about earnings by sector, uh, and the earnings are P60 earnings, i.e. both uh, bonus and uh, base salary. Um, but anyway, um, this is probably the um, the thing that I'll talk about less today, simply because this is actually um, a sort of self-contained document, if you like. You can just go online and use the left and right arrows to kind of cycle backwards and forwards between the pages. Um, what I actually want to talk about, though, is uh, a tool which I haven't really publicized very much. So you're kind of getting a, a sneak peek at something that actually very few people have seen, which is um, my actuarial job ads analysis. Um, just a bit of background first. So every um, every month or so, I get the Actuary magazine through the post, and I'm, I make a point of looking at uh, the job ad section. Um, I've actually done it for the last uh, two or three issues. I think uh, for some strange reason, I don't seem to have actually received the Actuary recently. Uh, so maybe I'll get onto them about that. But anyway, it's it's something that I update every two or three months. Uh, and whenever I get the actual magazine and what I do is I look at the back pages I look at every single job ad uh, by um, our competitor recruitment firms and I record a number of things so I record first of all um, the, the date I record the sector you don't really, really need to worry about the acronyms um, LLM just stands for Lloyd's and London Market um, and then I read the job ad and I code it manually depending on what I feel the job ad is about so in this instance this ad um, the the primary skill it seemed to look for was capital um, the budget was 65,000 it was based in London um, having read the ad I was sure that uh, being qualified wasn't essential hence why this is a no um, these, by the way, tend to be mostly no's for some of the, the qualified actuary jobs. Obviously, the FIA essential part is, is ticked yes. Um, but generally, the actuary doesn't really have many adverts for, say, chief actuary jobs. Um, and likewise, th there are very few ads for, for part-time roles or for flexible roles. But anyway, I think the, the sort of meat and bones, if you like, of, um, of the ads is basically the... Uh, the sector which I determine based on the uh, ad wording, the primary skill. Um, with quite a lot of the ads, um, they would often say our client is looking for somebody with, say, capital experience, but they would also look at somebody with Lloyd's of London reserving experience, um, in which case there is also a secondary skill that, again, I code up. So this is all based on my judgment. There's no sort of scientific way about it, but I tend to try and take a, a consistent approach. Um, and of course, I only uh, put down uh, what's stated on the budget there. So this, this, if you like, is the maximum stated budget. Um, what you'll see is that plenty of the ads don't actually have a uh, budget and they don't get included. So uh, just to repeat, uh, the only ads that I am uh, adding are the ones where there is a budget uh, stated on there. Um, and obviously the, the budget, as you can tell, sort of ranges. So... Um, Last year, so this is obviously around the 
the time of the pandemic, April, May, June, um, and and so on. Um, you know, most of the jobs being advertised range from about 55 at the lower end to about 125 at, at the higher end. Occasionally, you get jobs paying more than that, um, but it tends to be that 50 to 120, I'd say, is the the majority of the adverts. And then everything's typed out in um, what I guess you might call a sort of tidy format, i.e., one entry per per row. Um, and then what this is, so this this Google Sheet here. Um, this is then used by Tableau, and I've actually created an online Tableau viz. Again, I will ask uh, Paul to put the link on his uh, channel. Um, and um, although I won't actually be upgrading the, the viz itself, the data itself does get refreshed by Tableau uh, every 24 hours. So at some point, hopefully, I'll get around to maybe finding, say, the you know September, October, November editions of the Actuary magazine, uh, maybe at the the extra ads on there, um, but essentially, although the the viz itself won't be updated and it hasn't been updated since this March last year, the data itself does get updated. It's just a case of you know whenever I get around to it. Um, the viz itself has quite a few tabs, so it has 19 tabs at the moment. Um, they tend to be quite similar. So, for example, the first three tabs are uh, sector pay, um, so median, top quartile, and you know what what I've called top end, i.e. 90th percentile um, budget. So if we say you click on uh, sector 50th percentile, um, what you see here is basically uh, the sector which uh, gets cross-referenced from the Google Sheet here. So it could be MGA, it could be ILS and reinsurance, personal lines and SME, Lloyd's and London Market, um, you know, captive. There's a global sector which is um, some of the ads tend to be written in such a way that you don't really know what what kind of company it is. So it could be, say, um, a global insurer that has a Lloyd's and London market operation. It could just be a, a global insurance group that maybe does personal and small commercial lines, but no Lloyd's, but it's very hard to tell. So um, global um, is a sort of catch-all phrase for that. Um, and then what this basically does is it shows you essentially the 50 percentile, i.e. The, the median uh, budget, the budget here being base salary for all these sectors, it's it's obviously ordered by uh, highest first. I mean, I'd probably forget about captive. You know, there's only one advert for a captive job uh, in the last sort of five years or so. Um, you know, niche insurers, uh, brokers, they tend to you know have their the highest uh, budgets. Um, you know, at the median basically consulting lots on the market and so on um, again you know the uh, the numbers here so one here shows you that there's only one ad for a regulator that I was able to see with a budget likewise only one ad here for a captive um, 18 ads for um, for niche businesses um, you know 24 for brokers by far the most uh, you know, with 684 is for the Lloyd's and London markets. So I would say, you know, that's obviously a very, very good number. Um, and if you click on um, the other tabs, uh, it just shows you the, the 75th percentile, i.e. The, the top quartile budgets and the, you know, top decile budgets. Um, that gives you an idea of, um, obviously, the most money that you could actually uh, get in in certain sectors. So, for example, here how I'd interpret this. So, this is the 90th percentile budget by sector. So, um, the, the interpretation for this is that of all the job ads in the consulting field that I've determined are in the consulting field, and there are 64 of them. Um, the uh, the 90th percentile base salary budget is about 160,000. I mean, that would be Roughly speaking, a senior manager in one of the big four, um, you know, um, and so on. Um, so the the next one, uh, the next set of, of three tabs is called a skills matrix. Now, in many ways, I actually think the skills matrix is probably the most interesting one for any aspiring actuary. And what I've done here is essentially created a a two dimensional matrix um, on. The x-axis here, you have the um, the first, sorry, the the primary skill uh, that the ad um, uh, asks for, and then uh, here on the y-axis you have the secondary skill. So clearly the diagonal will be empty because um, essentially that would mean, you know, 
primary skill PR pricing, secondary skill PR pricing, well, there's no point recording it twice. So all the diagonal elements here will be empty. Um, but what this does show you is combinations of uh, skills. So for example, if we say look at PL pricing as a primary skill and data science as a secondary skill, um, there were two job ads that I, I, I could see with this particular combination. Uh, the, the medium budget was 72,000. By the way, it might seem like the number of job ads is quite low. There will be, of course, a lot more job ads with PL pricing and data science. However, um, most of those will be without a budget. And once again, if there is a uh, job ad without a budget, it doesn't get included uh, in here. Um, there's also a sort of heat map, if you like. So uh, you can see that the higher number of job ads for a particular combination of primary and secondary skill, uh, the darker the color. So for example, this one here, um, the primary skill is uh, London market pricing. The secondary skill is London market reserving. This would be, broadly speaking, your divisional actuary role in the Lloyds and London market, where perhaps you're the actuarial manager for um, you know uh, two or three lines of business, um, and you perhaps manage one, two, three people. Um, the medium budget here is seventy-five thousand. Uh, of course, I've got tabs for the the top quartile and also the uh, the top decile budgets as well. Um, as you can tell, it does take some time to actually load these up. Um, and what I will do is basically play around with this because what this essentially tells you is over the last five years, um, looking at all of the adverts where there is a budget indicated. So again, the adverts without budgets don't get included in this. But looking at the adverts where the budget is uh, indicated, it shows you essentially where you can actually get the best um, or the best paying skills combination. Um, the um, I would say the ones that tend to pay quite well, uh, just sort of looking briefly at this, um, London market reserving and consulting tends to, to pay quite well, typically because it's often um, roles that um, maybe start out in consulting, uh, you do lots of London market and lodge reserving, you build up expertise, you spend 10, 12 years there, and then you maybe go into um, you know, a managing agency working as, say, the head of reserving or the deputy chief actuary and so on and so forth. Um, so that's quite a sort of lucrative uh, skill. Um, London market pricing and um, what, what's called RI, which stands for, for reinsurance. So reinsurance analytics and London market pricing pays very well. That's primarily a function of brokers and brokers do pay very, very well. Um, I would say above the norm. Um, though it does take a certain type of person to actually work for a, for a broker. Um, I would say um, the ones that tend to pay less well, so here, for example, capital and data, again, to some extent, it suffers from the fact that there are very few job ads with budgets, and I would expect that these are primarily for, say, capital analysts or maybe capital analysts with some kind of data science type background, maybe doing some programming, you know. Um, but if you are just after basically finding out what is the most lucrative uh, kind of field uh, to be in uh, or combination of, of fields to be in, um, then you know you can sort of play around. This one is also quite good, London market reserving and consulting. Um, London market reserving and London market pricing, as I said, tends to pay very well too. Uh, broking we've covered. Um, advanced analytics is, I guess, what you guys might call um, <sighs> So sometimes I've put advanced analytics rather than, than data science because it's it's more about pricing sophistication and, and pricing optimization. Um, what I've put on uh, on data science is, is really about uh, kind of programming with, with R and Python. So, um, you know, it, it's never really a sort of precise field that sometimes I have to use my, uh, my judgment, you know, but anyway, um, have a look at these. Um, there's also um, things, for example, for managerial premium, i.e. looking at the uh, the job ads that uh, require managerial expertise explicitly. Of course, many job ads won't say it, but it's still a sort of nice to have. But amongst the job ads that have definitely re requested it and that haven't requested it, you can see here what the sort of, um, you know, kind of say in this case, 50th percentile, so, so median uh, budget is. Again, I would suggest that you tend to uh, sort of play uh, play with them. Um, this, if you like, is a sort of year-on-year -year, 
look at um, at median uh, budget. So um, this is actually median, and this is mean budgets. Um, so I've been looking at the issues going back to 2012. Um, you know, I would say it sort of fluctuates slightly. Um, I'd probably observe anecdotally that because there are so many uh, qualified actuaries in the market nowadays, um, salaries perhaps aren't as aggressive as they were maybe, say, 10 years ago. Uh, you know, uh, the sort of heyday for Solvency 2 really was between around 2010, 11, 12. After that, um, what I found was a lot of people coming into the market. And of course, when you have situations of very high supply, moderate demand, um, you know, you tend to find salaries don't necessarily go, uh, go as, um, as, as high as you'd like. Um, and the last one is basically titled Best Paid Primary Skill Outside London. So this, I think, is just to cater for people in the regions, um, you know, a bit of a moot point nowadays. Um, and what I wanted to do was to look at all of the job ads where the location wasn't London. Um, and it's sort of broken up by uh, the, the sort of skill set here. Um, the the highest one is unsurprisingly pricing. You know, it seems like pricing in the Midlands um, seems to, to pay quite uh, quite well. Again, I would caveat this very strongly by saying that uh, there are lots of adverts that specify a location but don't specify a, a salary, so therefore they don't get included. Um, Paul also asked me to just mention a few words about um, what would be useful on skills going forward. So um, my view on skills really is, I think for the the younger generation of actuaries, i.e. if you're just starting out, if you're just qualifying, I think really um, you should be looking to beef up your, your data science and your programming skills as much as possible. Over the last 12 months, I've seen a lot of companies um, in all kinds of roles, not just actuarial, by the way, but I've seen companies um, ask for people with stronger technology skills, uh, people that can look at uh, actuarial data strategy, uh, people that can look at creating dashboards and automated management information. And all of these really kind of come back to the same thing, which is, you know, can you use code in some way, shape or form to make your life easier? Can you use code to automate processes? Can you use code to uh, provide management with a, a self-service type of uh, MI? And I think if if that's you, then I think you will have a very, very good career ahead. I mean, I've done this job for 17 years now. Um, I am uh, not convinced that AI is going to take over and um, you know get people out of business, but I do think that there's only one direction of travel when it comes to data and numbers, which is more data, more numbers, you know, bigger data than I think perhaps we have ever seen actually, you know, who's to say in five years time, what big data really looks like, you know, you've got trends like IoT, you know, the internet of things, perhaps bringing a deluge of data. So I, I really do think that all of the younger actuaries nowadays should of course focus on the soft skills and presentation skills and and management skills, but you know those often uh, take time to kind of be um, be part of your toolkit. But something that I think you can actually have influence over because you can do it yourself. Um, that's programming. So my advice is, in closing, uh, you know, please do take up data science certificates. Um, you know, I I won't recommend anything in particular, but do uh, do seek to upgrade your data science and your programming skills. I would say either R or Python would be fine. I think anecdotally, there's maybe a marginally higher demand for Python than there is for R, but they tend to be used sometimes for different things. But nonetheless, get yourselves coding, get yourselves uh, upskilled on data science, uh, finish your exams, and in all honesty, uh, you will have a great career ahead of you. And with that, I'm signing off. Many thanks. Bye.